Let's see if yeah. he tucked any of them into what he said yesterday about the status of his QB1 who did not play in week one due to a calf injury, Russell Wilson. Uh, he feels better today than he did uh, over the weekend. And so what that means, I don't know as we sit here today. Um, I know that we're going to take the same approach that we take with a lot of people in terms of injury. Um, we'll first start with his participation and his level of participation, his quality of participation. Um, over the course of the week, we'll be analyzing whether he's capable of protecting himself, um, whether he's capable of being productive. Um, when we get to those, you know, when we get to those points, that's when we'll ponder his inclusion or not. Um, and when that happens will probably be, be a component of that equation. But as I sit here today, uh, we're preparing as if Justin is going to be our quarterback. I think that's the appropriate way to do it. Speculation is a waste of time. Uh, Russell's hurt. He's not available to us. And so, as you guys know, as a general practice, man, I focus my energy on those that are available and their readiness. That was kind of a pull string at the end, kind of. And he had a little bit of a tell mm -hmm. when he was talking about Russell's status. He did a little scratch the beard. Like, oh, he, I go. think he knows. Yeah, he knows. But he there. knows. Well, he, I think he knows. Well, is I think it really he knows they're not going to have that him this mean? week. Uh, is it a tell when he's like, actually saying the thing that it's like, hey, we don't really think he's going to be available, so we're preparing Justin Fields to start? Is that really a tell when he's it's a, saying when it's a it's a stress rea It's a stress reaction to the words that are coming out of your mouth. And sometimes it's a tell that you're not telling the truth, or sometimes it's just an indication that you're not really all that thrilled with the situation. It's like, damn, I wish this wasn't the case. But, but okay. Mike Tomlin usually doesn't do that. You usually don't see a lot of the – the scratch of the beard or any of that stuff. It's just straight delivery of the periodic pull string message. But it it underscores, and maybe this is why he did this, because one of the our biggest story at PFT yesterday from a traffic standpoint was the Jordan Mason letting the cat out of the bag that he knew on Friday that he was going to play on Monday, that he was going to start on Monday, which made the – 49ers injury report as of Saturday, a load of crap. If Jordan Mason's telling the truth and why wouldn't he tell the truth? When you say something that goes against the interests of your team, it's more likely it's the truth. Cause why the hell would you say it? If it wasn't the truth, if it goes against the interests of your team, maybe Tomlin is concerned at some level when they put the questionable tag on Russell Wilson, he really, he really wasn't questionable. I said Friday night on the pregame, it was more like doubtful. They don't use doubtful nearly enough they use questionable as a strategic, and they being every team, not just the Steelers. Questionable right. is the little area where you can kind of hide your uncertain player. And we'll call him questionable, and it will keep the other side guessing. The problem is it keeps everyone else guessing. And the first clue for a road game, and it becomes fairly definitive, they leave the guy home. He doesn't travel. Yes. But Russ traveled. Russ traveled, you know, high knees on the plane or calf raises or whatever. And then we found out on Sunday morning he wasn't going to play. But they knew he wasn't going to play. They knew it was Justin Fields because it seems like they know now. And it'll be interesting to see how they list him this week as they get ready for week two. How will they designate Russell Wilson at the appropriate time? Because he probably should have been doubtful last week. And if they do him doubtful this week, I think it just underscores he probably should have been doubtful last week because he hasn't aggravated it since last week. Well, right. And so we'll see if he's able to participate in any way over the course of the week. But I think, and Tomlin basically said this, when you have a quarterback who is available and can take the reps and can get everything that you need to in practice in terms of the game planning and all of that and making sure that, you know, every single play that you can rep it so that you can then be out there on Sunday and be comfortable with it. I, I think it's pretty clear that, you know, not only do they say they're planning to start Justin Fields, but he is probably going to start. So, you know, as Tomlin likes to say, another pull string quote, you know, we will let participation be our guide, right? So it doesn't sound like that Russell Wilson's going to participate in any way today being Wednesday. Tomorrow, we'll see if that level increases or not. And then Friday, if he's able to do something, we'll see. So, yeah, I, I, I. I think when Tomlin says, you know, there's no sense in, you know, hypotheticals or whatnot, that they're planning to start Justin Fields, then uh, they, I think he means it. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But I, I do believe that there was at least a time last year 
maybe it was two years ago, I can't remember, where they kind of said something similar about, oh, we're planning to start A quarterback, but then B quarterback ends up starting because they were healthy enough. I don't remember if it was Kenny Pickett or somebody else that they had, but I, I believe that that's happened before. So again, you got to, if, if Russell Wilson all of a sudden is in a limited Thursday and he's a full participant Friday, then that does make it more likely that he's going to start. But based on Tomlin's comments yesterday, I don't see that happening. Well, and the thing about the soft tissue injury, calf injury, hamstring injury, you just have to give it time. And yes, the problem is you have to give it more time than you think you have to yes. give it because you think you're fine because you're walking around normally. You can jog. You can run. Then you hit that moment where you open it up and it grabs and it's mm -hmm. set back and it takes more time to get back to where it was. And usually when that happens, that's the point where the person who tried to will himself beyond the normal recovery will be forced to take even more time to really yes. let it heal this time. And it's a shame because week two, Steelers at the Denver Broncos. Russell Wilson's opportunity for a little bit of revenge on the team that is paying him $36.8 million <laughs> this year, and the Steelers are paying one point two. And uh -huh. all the stuff that happened last year, it's a shame that we won't see Russell Wilson. And it was odd that we saw him in uniform on the sideline. That was one of the things that stood out from the cluster of games at 1 o'clock Eastern, and it came out multiple times in the viewing room at NBC. Why is Russell Wilson in uniform? And you know, if you can be in uniform, why aren't you playing? But the emergency third quarterback from the 53-man roster, it probably makes him feel better to be in uniform. That's just the way Russ is. He's all in. He doesn't want to be in street clothes. He doesn't want to send any bad messages that he's not ready to go, even though he wasn't ready to go. So he'll probably be in uniform on Sunday in Denver, even if he isn't playing. But this week, I think it's different more likely to be doubtful, more likely to not travel. That would be odd if he doesn't travel and go back to Denver. But we'll see how it plays out. And uh, Justin Fields got the win, although it wasn't like he threw for 300 yards, but they got the win. The bottom line is they got the win, and we'll see if and when Russell Wilson goes back to being QB1 once he's healthy. Last year when Kenny Pickett got healthy, he did not go back to being QB1. And that they was one of the reasons back. why they the relationship ultimately fell apart. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.